there, my fellow barbecue enthusiast. Mike Baker here, Baker's Barbecue. Hey, today we got the barrel smoker fired up. Got a little bit of apple wood waiting to go in there as soon as it comes up to temp. And we've got a whole side of spare ribs, lightly trimmed down, shook down some salt, pepper, and garlic with a little bit of Malcolm Reed's Killer Hog on top of that. So we're doing a minimal amount of trimming. It's not gonna be St. Louis cut. Uh, I wanna do the whole spares. For some reason, I've been craving some full spare ribs. It's been a long time since I've cooked the whole, the whole rack like this. So I'm looking forward to doing it, looking forward to getting it going. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Go out there and get your smokers fired up and cook right along with me. And uh, let's get this cook started. All right, so like we talked about, today we're gonna to do some whole spare ribs. So I'm just gonna show you real quick how I prep these. Now these are not St. Louis cut ribs, which is trimmed down ribs out of spare ribs. These are actually the full spare. And for some reason I've been craving a full spare set of ribs. So I thought, well today, you know what? I'm gonna pick up some, we're gonna trim them down a little bit. And then tomorrow we're gonna cook these uh, over charcoal and wood. So I'm gonna get it seasoned up today, let it set overnight in the refrigerator, and uh, then we're gonna be good to go. So one of the first things I wanna do is flip this over. I like to do the backside first. And as you can see, big piece of meat. There's actually a breastbone right here. I'm gonna leave this flap here on, take some of this off. So uh, let's get to trimming. The first thing I'm gonna do is take off this breastbone right here it be a little tricky to get a hold of that, but find the spot where it comes through. Should be about right in that area. Let's see here. Sometimes you gotta get down there and give it a good chomp. You get that sucker out of there. Be able to come right back through there if I can get a hold of it. There we go, perfect. Get that piece there off. And then from there, start trimming out some of this other fat. It's back here on the back of this thing. Some of that's not any good. I'll get that membrane off here in just a little bit, but kind of cut some of that fat there out. I'm not gonna worry about taking out too much because I'm gonna let this cook for a pretty good while tomorrow. Probably six, maybe seven hours. And a lot of this stuff here will render. So just want to kind of give you guys a quick down and dirty. No science to this. Just clean off the fat there pretty good. And you don't even have to do that if you don't want to. I just like to, I like to get a little bit of head start there on it. And the next thing I do is I like to go ahead and take this piece of meat right here off. But that's not gonna do anything for the cooking process. So one of the best ways here to get the membrane off here, is flip this to the other side. Just take you a paper towel. Hopefully I can get this to work Work here. Sometimes it's real easy, sometimes it's not. A lot of times you see people, they'll start it with a, with a butter knife. I've always found I can usually grab it like this pretty good at the end. And just pull it right out of there. There we go. It's a big chunk of it there. Got another little piece here. Always have you a couple extra towels handy because usually you're not gonna be able to get it in one with one paper towel. So get that off. Trim brush that fat out of there. That's some pretty pretty big chunks of fat there. may not necessarily be good for you. Let's get that out of the way. Let's 
All right, then from there, we'll go back over to the other soap. Sorry about that. Trying to move as quick as I can for this part of the video. I'm gonna season the bottom side first. So it's actually looking pretty good. Not much more I really need to do to that right there. Go ahead and square that off a little bit. Go ahead and get that squared up just a little bit, kind of gives it a better appearance. And then from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, put a little bit of mustard down as a base. You don't have to really season this side as much, but I will say, when you're doing the full spares, you got a lot of meat right over here. And a lot of times that is really good meat for later if you wanna cut off and maybe eat eat some rib without a bone, or you can take that off, put that into uh, baked beans, that kind of thing. So today, I'm gonna season this up with a little bit of my own personal salt, pepper, garlic. Come here for just a second here. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to get the water going over here. But I'm gonna use a little bit of my own salt, pepper, garlic and uh, then I'm gonna come back with a little bit of killer hog. Back from Reed killer hog. Kind of been a little bit of a killer hog here lately. A lot of times I like to go ahead and get started with the rub. And I like to do quite a few different cooks with it. Kind of see how it does on different stuff. So that's kind of why you're seeing that. So I'm just gonna start off here with a good coat of this. Going down through there. This will give it a good salty, savory kick. I got a little pepper in there too. And then I'm gonna put some of the killer hog, the barbecue rub, Malcolm Reed. This gives a really good color. Kind of pushing that salt pepper. And I got that thicker coarse pepper on there, Dad. I'm gonna kind of try that out. See, it's actually the, the, uh, I've gone blank here. But anyway, it's the thicker cut pepper. So I'm gonna go back here with a little salty, with a little uh, the barbecue rub, killer hog. Look pretty good with that. It's a pretty big sized piece of meat here since it's a full spare. So I'm gonna go heavy with it. Looks good. I love that color. I love the color that Malcolm Reed's Killer Hog has to it there. And just flip it onto the other side. We're gonna do the same thing, not real complicated. I'm gonna leave all this fat here. I'm gonna take this little piece here out because that's not gonna be any good. Kind of slimy, not beneficial for anything. You don't want that. So if you see with any kind of meat trimming, if you see any kind of fat, that's not fat that you think would be beneficial or could render, I just recommend getting it out of there as best you can. Because you're not losing anything by getting rid of it. And if you leave it, you may not be gaining anything by having it on there. All right, so put down a little bit of mustard. Make sure you get this mustard rubbed in good. You don't want any spots where it's sitting in a pool. If it gets pulled up, like I've talked about in other videos, then a lot of times the bark will not form there because it's, it's holding too much moisture. All right, so go in here with a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic. Not too heavy, just to get a little douse of it. Go back there and rub that in. If it gets a little heavy in spots, just rub it off there. And then go back here with some good killer hog. Knock them read. Just like that. Like I've said in other videos, you know, it's not brain science here. Just go in there, have a good time with it. Not very often you can make a mess as a grown person. I remember there's some people watching who aren't grown, but you know, sometimes it's fun to make a mess. Getting here, and have a good time, get it all put together. All right, so we slide this over here out of the way. And then from there, 
and I won't necessarily make you guys watch all this, but from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cover this up with foil, the actual chopping block. I'm gonna cut it, cover it up with foil, and I'm gonna put it in the smoker, or not in the smoker, but in the refrigerator overnight. And I'm just gonna let all this uh, seasoning sit here, start coming together. It'll actually start going ahead and creating a little bit of a, a barky crust, if you will, which is good, gives a chance to work on the meat. And uh, it's gonna be delicious. So we'll get this on tomorrow and uh, we'll get it all smoked up. All right, so we're fixing to get on these pork spare ribs here. Smoker opened up there. Got some good apple wood down the bottom. So we'll sit out there just like that. What to it? That's about a perfect fit. That's a big set of spares right there. Here's a little bit of the trimmings I had. I'm just gonna set those over to the side. Try to pull that back just a little bit. Give myself a little bit more room. Good sized rack of ribs. All right, so we got those on. Now I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna get my thermometer set up and uh, we're gonna let this thing smoke away. So it's gonna be delicious and uh, I'm ready to eat, but we got about seven, eight hours to go. So sit back and relax. We're gonna keep on smoking. All right, so we're at the two hour mark here. I'm gonna open it up, check it. I've got uh, the the uh, damper's gauge back just a little bit. We're running about 239 to 245, somewhere back and forth in that range. But we're gonna open them up, check them, and uh, let's see if we need a spritz or if we need to. Uh, I normally don't flip my ribs around, but hey, today we're cooking it on this big barrel smoker, big uh, side of spare ribs. So uh, sometimes you have to adjust as you go, not knowing how it's gonna react. So let's take a quick look at it. Oh yeah, coming together. Looking good. But there's where a little bit of our seasoning is kind of pulled up on us there. Get rid of that. Get that drop down here and burn off. Looking good, starting to get a little bit of a bark. See what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna rotate these. I'll bring on slightly. I'm not gonna spritz yet. I'm gonna go a little bit longer because there's, it's starting to form a bark, but I don't want to, uh, I want to give it plenty of time to get it going really good. So it's going to kind of rotate those around and uh, we're going to come back here in probably about another hour and check them out. By that time, some of this here, I'm starting to see it is starting to get, uh, starting to firm up a little bit, probably starting to get to where maybe about another hour it needs a little bit of spritzing. So coming together good, looking nice. And uh, let's let it go for about another hour. We'll come back out and check it. three hour mark here. I'm gonna open it up and check it. I'm not gonna dot with it too much. Uh, my fire's come up a little bit. I've been running at about 2.30 and I just kicked it up a little bit while ago and that's jumped up to about 2.50, 2.55. But anyway, we're gonna check it, see if it needs to be spritzed, see if we need to flip it, rotate it, uh, kind of see where we are. So let's take a quick, uh, quick look at it. Oh wow, the suckers are looking good. Look at that. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I am going to rotate it around this way. I like to just rotate them around occasionally like that. Rotate around like that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna flip it right at the moment. It's looking good though. So I'll tell you, let's see, it's dry. Oh yeah, it's not, uh, see it's not coming off. See when you tap that like that, and that bark is set, then none of the uh, none of the season comes off. So it's actually time to go ahead and spritz. So we're gonna spritz it up. I got, a little, I got uh, apple cider vinegar and uh, water. It's about 80% water, 20% apple cider vinegar. Hey, but you can make up your own ratio to that depending on how you like it. 
This has a good little tartness to it and uh, it really helps to rehydrate the, uh, the ribs. So let's, let's spritz it up real quick. Oh yeah. Looking real good. I love when those ribs start looking like that. I always think barbecue, well, I kind of look at barbecue, slowly, slowly melting meat into candy goodness, if you will. So anyway, we're gonna let that go for about, uh, we're gonna shut this down, let it go for about another, maybe about another hour. We'll come back and we'll check it and uh, see how she's doing then. All right, we are at the six hour mark and uh, I'm just kind of doing the finishing touches now. The ribs look phenomenal, as you'll see here in a second. And uh, probably gonna go about another 30 minutes. You know, temperatures come down to about 2.30. So it's relatively low. So I can let them sit there for quite some time at that temp. But anyway, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at them and I may flip them and let them go the last 30 minutes or so upside down. Let's see, let's see how they look. Oh, well, check that out. Check that out. That is phenomenal. All right, let's see if we can get these things picked up here. Flipped over. Wow, things are amazing. Look at that. We'll flip over some of the trimmings here as well. It is a little bit of spritz. Wow, some good looking ribs. I gotta tell you what, it's been a long time since I did the full spare like this, you know, just trimmed up old school, old school style, kind of like how restaurants do it, but I really missed it. So I'm looking forward to eating it, turning into these later. We're gonna let that go by another 30 minutes or so and uh, finish out and uh, we're gonna go from there. The six and a half hour mark, and I'm getting ready to take them off. They're finishing out at about 226 degrees in the smoker, and uh, let's see how they look. Oh, wow, check that out. One little spritz on there. Do a flip over. And then I'm gonna get these set up over here on the chopping block. Man, check that out. <laughs> Sorry about the noise there, my wife just pulled up. Sometimes things just happen when you're filming like this. But look at those, boy, those, are those pretty or what? Look at that. Like I said, sorry about the noise, guys. All right, so I'm gonna get these things pulled off. I'm gonna take them inside. I'm gonna let them rest for probably about an hour, 30 minutes or an hour, something like that. And uh, we're gonna be eating some ribs here shortly. These things look good. All 
All right, so we got these spare ribs all cooked and done, and they turned out absolutely phenomenal. Got them cut up. I'll show you one here in a second. Uh, just to kind of recap, we did this old school spare ribs, just did a minimal amount of trimming on them, and uh, shook them down with garlic, salt, pepper, and garlic, and just a little bit of uh, killer hog by Malcolm Reed. So we got old school ribs here, old spare ribs, and uh, cooked them on the smoker, uh, barrel smoker today. They averaged about 240, probably in temperature. Uh, and I cooked them six and a half hours. They turned out phenomenal. So I'm gonna pick one up, come show it to you, and I'll take a quick bite of it. Check that out. Hope you can see that. Like I said, these are old school. These are not St. Louis style cut. These are the spare ribs. Just the old fashioned style. So I'm gonna take a quick bite of it. Cause they do look phenomenal. Where do I wanna buy that here? Mm. Do a clean bite. Wow. That's delicious. I can taste the salt and pepper and the garlic. Pretty strong. A little bit of the killer hog on there. It tastes like old fashioned, just the old school fashioned uh, pork ribs that you can get at any kind of barbecue joint and any kind of back row all across the United States of America. Just a really good pit tasting, uh, old fashioned barbecue rib, which is my favorite. So hope you guys have enjoyed the video today. If you would, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to ring the bell for notifications when new videos come out. And uh, until I see you next time, Happy smoking.